This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be implementing the last interaction of our system, which is to have our units uh, try to eat if they are hungry. And in this particular case, this um, interaction is going to occur. It's going to start in the unit itself and then call back into the forest system to try to find some prey to eat. So to start, we need in our onTick method of our unit, we need to actually kind of tell this that if you know you are below your eat threshold, then you need to eat. And so what we'll do here is we'll simply call an eat method. Now we have not defined this yet, uh, but we're going to do that right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is going to define this eat method. It's going to be pretty simple. It's just going to have a void eat as its definition. And then inside of here, what we're really going to do is we're going to look, um, basically look into the forest and see, is there a food available of the type that I like to eat? So how we'll do this is we'll say unit food equals forest dot get unit. This is another uh, method we still need to define. And we're going to pass into this the current unit's profile dot eat preference. And so this is going to say if I am a rabbit, I am looking for grass. If I am a wolf, I am looking for rabbits. And this will either return, we're going to set this up so this will return either the type of unit that we're looking for, or it will simply return null. And so we'll simply check that now and say if food does not equal null, meaning we didn't indeed find a um, instance of the type of food we're looking for, then what we'll do is we'll we're gonna debug log just to kind of show that this is happening. The name of our current unit plus eats plus food dot name. And that will get us, you know, wolf one eats rabbit three or something like that. Then we'll say current hunger minus equals the food dot profile dot nutrition value. So that is, again, this is that setting we set in our unit to say that if you get eaten, this is how much hunger you take away. Then we'll say food dot transform dot parent equals null. The reason we're doing this is that if this particular food still is in the queue to go, um, then we don't want it to try to run when it's already been eaten. So this is going to remove it from the queue of um, possible things that might act, might multiply, might eat because it's already been eaten. And then finally, we will say destroy food dot game object. And it might seem like the line above is kind of um, redundant because this thing is being destroyed, but destroy doesn't actually happen until the end of the frame. And so what we don't want to happen again is for this particular, you know, say a rabbit gets eaten, uh, we don't want it then to get to the rabbit in the list and say, oh, um, the rabbit's going to eat some grass or the rabbit's going to multiply because it's been eaten by a wolf. Things like that. Okay, so that's all we need to do in our unit. Now we need to jump back to our system, our forest, to create this get unit method. So let's jump back to forest system. And down below here, I'm going to say public unit get unit. And this is going to take a unit type. And we'll simply just call that uh, unit type for clarity. And so here we're just going to use kind of a um, if else statement quick and dirty. There's going to be ways we can make this more optimal, a little bit more modular so that we could add things more easily. But for right now, we're just going to get it working. So I'm going to say if unit type equals unit type dot plant. If, if, the, um, if the consumer in this case eats plants, then we're gonna look through our grass. So we'll say, if grass holder dot child count is greater than zero, then we will return grass holder dot child count 
zero dot get component unit. So basically we're just taking the first one off of the list, making sure we're returning the actual unit of that type, not just the transform, which this gets us. Because we're not dealing with things like the closest grass or you know a particular type of grass, we can just take the top one off the list and work with it that way. Otherwise, if the um, child count is zero, then we can simply return null. Oh, whoops. Sorry, this shouldn't be child count here. This should be um, get child. Something looks funny there. Okay, yeah, so this is gonna get child at index zero. Okay, so that's if it's a plant. If it's an animal, we'll say else if rabbit holder dot child count is greater than zero, then we'll return rabbit holder dot get child at the zero index again dot get component unit else if and here's how we're going to kind of make a design decision um, I think if wolves got hungry enough they would start eating each other so we're going to say else if wolf holder, meaning at this point there are no rabbits and we don't eat plants, so we're going to try to eat wolves at this point. We'll say if wolf holder dot child count is greater than zero, return wolf holder dot get child zero dot get component unit. else will simply return null. So this is sort of, this is what happens if you eat plants. All of this will kind of run through if you eat meat. First you'll try to eat a rabbit, then you'll try to eat a wolf, and then you'll simply return null. So that's really all we need for the actual functionality. Now if we hit play, what we will see is that when our rabbits and our wolves hit a certain hunger threshold, they'll start trying to eat um, either grass or other rabbits or some source of meat, depending on which they are. So let's jump back to Unity and see this in action. Click on my forest here, we'll hit play. I'll open these up. We've got the grass, we've got our rabbits, we've got our wolves. Grass starts populating. We see the hunger of the rabbits increasing. And they just, you saw that drop for a second there, and that's because the rabbits just started to eat. Rabbits are eating some more there. Uh, the grass still seems to be winning at this point. That's some probably tuning we want to do. And also the, we can see that the wolves are really starting to um, take a chunk out of the rabbit population. I'm going to close this grass because it's getting a little bit crazy there. But yeah, in fact, the wolves have almost completely gotten rid of the rabbits at this point. And what that's going to inevitably do is that now all of a sudden we see that these, um, these wolves are um, kind of over overeating and now they have nothing to eat so they're going to either eat each other um, and ultimately die off. Um, yeah, so there they go. So right now it's still a situation where the grass is just going to win, but um, that's what's going on there right now. I think we also have one other slight bug which is that in all of these cases right now, what's happening is that in that last case there, I'm pretty sure that last wolf actually ate itself because it got passed back. So that's one of a few kind of bugs and um, in optimal situations that are going on right now, as well as that our system is really not balanced right now. We've still got a situation where grass is gonna grow and grow and grow, but the animals kind of die out pretty quickly. So that we're gonna deal with in our next video, which is gonna be kind of tuning our systems and looking at different ways we can look at kind of maintaining some sort of a balance in the system. And then from there, we'll get into some bug fixes and making our code a little bit more modular and a little bit more um, optimal. So with that, we'll cover those in the next couple videos. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.